Happy Thursday, everyone. So today for math, we have two things to work on. We have our math warm up, and we have page two of our math packet called Making Polygons. At the bottom it says page 188 if you're not sure, okay? But let's focus on our warm up first. So it says, Joshua played his guitar for two and two six. Ooh, I'm going to underline that, or you can highlight it. Two and two six hours. All right, that's how much time, right? That's how we know what our measurement's going to be. It's going to be hours on Monday. Oh, that's the day he did it, on Monday. On Tuesday, he played for one hour less. Okay, so one hour less than Monday. On Wednesday, he played for, let me underline Wednesday so I know what date this one is. He played for one hour more than Monday. One hour more. In total, how many hours or how long did Joshua play his guitar on the three days? All right, so first we have to figure out how long he played for each of those days. So I'm just going to write Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Now Monday we already know. Monday is two and two six hours. So I'm going to write two and two over six and then I'll put the letter H, so I know it's an hour. Two to six hours. Tuesday was one hour less than Monday. So I just have to take away one <clears throat> from our whole number in this mixed number. So two minus one, that's easy. That's just one. So one and two, six, H. So one and two, six hours. And then last, we have Wednesday and Wednesday he played for one hour more than Monday. So let's add that one up. So two plus one would be three. So three and two over six H. All right, let's see. Let's see my big whole numbers first because those are always the easiest. So one plus two plus three. Let me put in the little plus signs here. One plus two plus three is going to be six. That's our whole number. And then we can add our fractions next to it. So we've got two six plus two six plus two six. So two, four, six out of six. Ooh, wait, six out of six. That's equal to one whole. So we're re really writing six plus one. Oh, that's super easy. We know six plus one is seven. So in total, how long did Joshua play his guitar on the three days? He played it for seven hours. Ooh. And I'll circle that in my notebook so I remember. He played for seven hours over those three days. Wow, he better be pretty good at guitar for playing for seven hours in just three days. All right, now let's look at our packet. It's asking us to do something special with materials that I set home with you. So let's see, making polygons. We already know that polygons are a 2D shape. They have all straight lines for the sides, right? No curvy lines. And it has to have at least three sides, right? So follow these directions to make new polygons from two or more power polygons. Hmm, power polygons. Well, I happen to send home with you a page called Power Polygons. Now, I really, really wish they had let me send home our real power polygons because power polygons, normally they aren't on paper. Normally, they're pieces of plastic and they're different shapes, right? So I've got ones that match up with the ones that we sent home with you. Right, so I've got my own that are actually real 
power polygons, right? Yours is just a piece of paper. So if you wanted to cut yours up to use them, you could. You could also find things in your own home that are the right kind of shape. You could also trace it by putting the power polygons page underneath your packet, kind of like tracing paper, and you can kind of see through it to try and make them as well. It's up to you however you want to use this paper to complete our page. But for me, I have a real power polygon pack, a pack of polygons, so I can use them for this problem. So <clears throat> it says, trace each new polygon, draw dotted lines to show the sides of the polygons that you used and write the letter of each power polygon inside. Now, our poly power polygons on this paper all have a letter inside of them. So you're going to use that letter to tell us which power polygon you were using for these projects, these problems. So let's see, I need to create first, I need to create, let's see, make three three-sided polygons. Make them as different from one another as you can. Now we already know that a three-sided polygon, that has to be a triangle. And even if I make my triangles super different, they're all going to have to have three sides, right? So we can do a couple different kinds of polygons. Let's see if we can combine our power polygons into some new, better ones. Not better, but just different, right? So I've got two of my really, really big right angles, and we know that this is a right triangle because it makes a perfect L, it makes a perfect 90 degree angle on one side, right? Now, I could definitely use this one, or I could combine it to make one giant, Whoa, that's a really big one, right? I can make one giant right triangle because it makes that perfect L once again, right? Perfect corner, 90 degrees. This one's really big for my paper though. I don't think I can fit it. So let's try and see if we can make a smaller one out of two smaller triangles. Here we go. This is much more doable. So we still have our right triangle. It has a perfect L shape, right? 90 degrees. And I can combine it with another one. And, oh, I don't wanna make a square that has four sides. I want to make a three-sided polygon. So I can combine it. Ooh, there we go. And that still gives me a nice right angle. Awesome. So it says it wants us to draw dotted lines to show the sides of the power polygons that you used and write the letter of each power polygon inside. So let me do my dotted lines first. So I'm just going to go down and dot, 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 dot. And then I'll go to the other end and do my dots again. And then I'll do it on this side. And then I used two triangles to make this one giant triangle. And I wanna show that with those dotted lines. So I'm going to take one of them away. Oh look, there's my dotted lines, right? And I'll just draw my last line to show that these were actually two triangles combined to make one. Awesome, all right, so we have our first three-sided polygon. So let's see which one of these power polygons I used to make it. I used probably hmm, about that one. This, this one's a little bit bigger, but that, this is way too big, and this one won't work. So we'll say I used letter F. And what I will do is I will put the letter F inside both of these. I used the same size triangle two times to make this one really big right triangle. Now, let's see. None of these four-sided ones can really be combined in any way that can give me a three-sided polygon. So I'm just going to put that one to the side. Maybe my parallelogram can be combined with 
Mm, that really won't work. I think we have to use our three-sided triangle pieces in order to create any more three-sided polygons. So let me look back at my paper. Hmm. What else could I possibly use? Are there anything here that I don't have that's plastic that could be combined together to make a power polygon that has three sides? Hmm. Oh, you know what? This trapezoid looks like the bottom of a triangle. And I bet you if I combined this trapezoid with this equilateral triangle, right? That means it's equal on all sides. I bet you if I put this on top of here, I would be able to make one perfectly created giant equilateral triangle. Something that looks like I. I can make I by combining N and K. Now, I don't think I actually have the plastic shape that is that trapezoid, but let me check in my bag of tricks really fast. Hmm, I see parallelograms, and I see plenty of squares and triangles, but no trapezoid. So, I'm going to have to improvise. So, I know that I can combine one of my triangles with a trapezoid. So how about I draw my triangle first and then we can add the trapezoid to the bottom. So again, I'm going to make my dotted line. So I'm not going to draw a straight line. I'm just going to go dot, 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 dot. And then I'm going back around the bottom again. So dot, 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 dot. Now, I don't have a trapezoid. Now, I could go around my house and see if anything in my home is a small trapezoid shape, but I can also just make it myself. So let's add on to this in order to create our really nice three-sided polygon shape, right? So I'm going to use the letter K in my power polygons, which is the trapezoid. So dot, 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 dot. That doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to practice. We're just learning. So I'm going to try my best to get the best possible trapezoid shape. That's pretty close, I think, right? That looks like a nice trapezoid in my opinion. Do a couple extra dots to make it more obvious and we're ready. Okay, so let's see. According to my Power Polygons page, I was trying to use N and K. So let me write down N and K, N and K as my two letters. So, so far we've made a right triangle, which means it's got a right angle, the L shape, right? And we used F and F to make that. And then we've made our equilateral triangle, which means about all the sides are equal, right? And then let's try and do one more. Let's see if we can make something else. Hmm. Let's look carefully at this page. Is there any other shapes we can use? Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, this one right here, this shape, is wider than a right angle. If this triangle has a perfect right angle on it, we can match it up to here. And look, it's way wider. It's a lot wider than a right angle. This is called an obtuse triangle. And we can try to make one. Now let's see. Maybe I can combine three of my triangles to try and make it. Let's see if we can. So let me take this away. Our goal is to try and make the letter J on our power polygon. So hmm, let's see. This will only get me a box. That doesn't help very much. Hmm, nope. Hmm. And that won't do the trick either. Oh no, what do you think I should do? How can I make my obtuse triangle? 
I know that the obtuse triangle probably has one of these in it, right? And then it looks like I could do two skinny triangles next to it. That could maybe work, right? Maybe a piece of this here diamond. Hmm, I'm going to have to try and make it on my own. So we know that it has to be wider than a right triangle. Let me see if we can put it under my paper and I can see it well enough to try and draw it. Ooh, I see the lines. That will make it easier for me to draw this shape since we don't always have our power polygons with us when we're doing our work, we can improvise, we can make it up to make sure it works for us. So I'm just putting my paper, of my paper power polygons underneath my packet, and I can see through it just enough to be able to draw our shape. Now I can draw the whole thing to get that nice obtuse triangle, which means it has a side that's larger than 90 degrees. Awesome. And what's great about triangles is if I'm having trouble, I can just cut it in half to make it into two power polygons. Awesome. Now it's two power polygons and ooh, look, it's two right angle, right triangles can create one really big obtuse angle. Hmm, maybe that just helped me figure out how to make it in the future. If I've got two right triangles and I combine them, I can make one really big one. Now, interesting, hmm, hmm, very interesting indeed. <laughs> so, I use this shape, J, and then I had to split it up into two other ones. So I'm going to say, I probably use something similar to say L, right? That looks about right. Let's turn it this way so we can check. L looks pretty close to this side of my triangle. They look pretty similar. So I'm going to put the letter L on both sides to show that I use that shape I can combine it to create one giant obtuse triangle. Okay, now let's make three four-sided polygons. Make them as different from one another as you can. Now, this part is pretty easy. This part, four-sided polygons, we see those all day, every day. And I can definitely make one. So, I can use a variety of shapes, like say two triangles, I can combine them in different ways. I could make a square or maybe a rhombus. I don't want to make another triangle. A triangle is not a four-sided polygon. Hmm, maybe if I combine these, let's see. One, two, three, four. Ooh, and it kind of actually looks sort of kind of a little bit similar to a trapezoid in some ways, right? Well, I'm going to draw this as my first four-sided polygon. So let me get my pen out and I'm going to do my little dots again. Dot, 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 dot. So I've got my parallelogram here and one of my right triangles. And together with those two, I can create a nice, funky, fun-looking four-sided shape. Now, if you have a different idea for a four-sided shape, you don't have to copy me. We don't have to have the exact same shapes. As long as it has four sides, we're fine. Maybe you wanted to do a diamond or a big square or maybe a rectangle or a rhombus or maybe you wanted to create your own parallelogram or maybe you wanted to create a trapezoid. That's your choice. But for this one, I'm using my parallelogram, which is labeled as, hmm, is it not even on here? 
Oh my goodness, you know what? I might have to add another letter. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. Well, I could really use a polygon that is shaped like a parallelogram. So I'm just going to add my own onto here. And if you can think of another polygon shape that is really important to draw for you, and maybe you don't have it on your paper power polygons page, you can draw your own on here too. So L M N O P <laughs> for parallelogram. Perfect. So I'm going to say that I used my letter P and then one of my right triangles. So I'll say that I used letter F again. Letter F. All right. Let's make another polygon. Let's see. I think this time I'm just going to make a square. So I can use my two triangles. I can combine them and get a perfect square where all sides are equal. So let me get my pen out again and I'm going to draw my square. Square, square, square with all my little dots. And then I take one of my shapes away so that I can do my last line. Once again, I know that you don't have these plastic shapes at home. So don't be too worried if your lines aren't perfectly straight. It's not a big deal. Now, just like this one where I used FF, I'm going to say that I use the same thing again. So I'll do F, F. It's kind of cool that two triangles can be combined to either make a bigger triangle or they can be combined to make a square. It's pretty neat. So let's do one more. Let's decide on one more shape. Now, before I've only used two shapes to create my shapes, right? All these only use two shapes. Well, I wanna use three. I'm feeling a little greedy. So I'm going to use three shapes to create a really big trapezoid. Nice, that looks awesome. And I'm going to say that I'm ready to start. So I'm going to get my pen out again and do my little dots. Dot, 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 Now, if we were in school, we would be using our plastic power polygons. But since we're at home, we have to try our best with what we've got. So if you want to cut up those power polygons pages, feel free. If you want to trace them onto say a thicker piece of paper or even cardboard, that's a great idea, go for it. Or maybe you have a sibling or maybe you yourself have some plastic shapes at home that you can just use, that's fine too. Just make sure you label them with the letter that's on our Power Polygons page. And if you're making a new shape like I did with my parallelogram, just add that shape to your Power Polygons page and label it with the next letter on the alphabet. All right, let me take away my two triangles because then I can easily draw the lines of my square. So dot, 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 and dot, 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 Nice, I used my square, which is letter B on my power polygons page. And I used two right triangles. So I used F and F again. I've been using a lot of those Fs, but that's it. We created a total of six shapes using a ton of different shapes. We've got our giant right triangle, which has a perfect 90 degree angle right here. We've got our mostly equilateral, equal on all sides triangle using a trapezoid and the, a nice triangle here, a nice right triangle on top. And then we made an obtuse triangle, which means that one side is larger than 90 degrees using two 
right triangles, L and L. Then I made my three four-sided polygons. So I've got one, which is a funky shape. I don't know what to call this, but I do like it. It reminds me of a doorstop that we put in our house. And then we've got our square using two triangles. And then we made a really big trapezoid using two right triangles and my square in the middle. And that is it for today. That's all we had to do. Not too tough, definitely a little creative. If you wanted to use something other than a pen or pencil to make maybe marker, colored pencil, crayon, you can make this as colorful as you like, as long as it's easy to read, okay? All right, boys and girls, see you next time. Bye.